Being a community support officer, we spend 80% of our time out on foot. We tend to deal with youth disorder and alcohol problems. I would probably say 90% of our time. We do have other jobs that we do do, but it does tend to be youth disorder and alcohol problems that we deal with. In relation to man hours, um, certainly on a Friday and Saturday night, I would say it takes up maybe 50 to 60% of my time, um, which when you consider I'm on hours um, shift for 10 hours a day, that's probably six hours purely just dealing with disorder calls. We had a youth disorder call of youths drinking in a field. Uh, when we got there, there was males and females lying on the grass, playing, carrying on with themselves. And we come across a young girl who was lying on the grass, not making a lot of sense. Once we spoke to her, we'd realised she'd wet herself. So we got her stood up um, and everybody then noticed she'd had an accident. So we then took her home and t took her to our parents and obviously had to tell them what she'd done. She'd wet herself and we left her in the care of our parents. And the next day at school, she was the talk of the school of what had happened that night due to alcohol. I think like, probably most police officers will tell you that they've seen the violence, they've seen the injuries, the broken you know, skulls and all the rest of it, the violent side. But I think probably a little known element of it is the sexual uh, assaults on females. Um, probably the worst was a 16 year old who'd been quite badly sexually assaulted um, and she was just absolutely distraught, as were the family. Quite, quite horrific. We come across a motorbike accident on a main road where a young boy had fell off his motorbike. Uh, we later found out he had been drinking alcohol but at the time we didn't know this. We'd come across some um, severe facial injuries. Um, injury to his head and there was a lot of blood. We got an ambulance who took him to the accident emergency. We later then found out that he had been drinking alcohol and this was one of the causes for the accident. The consequences of if you're caught of drink driving um, are quite dire. Drink driving in itself, if you're caught with that, you're going to lose your driver's licence. And if you are particularly young, that suspension and disqualification is going to carry on you for 10 years, which is going to impact upon your insurance and it's going to make it extremely prohibitive financially, if nothing else, to do it. The other flip side of coin is, is drink drivers are um, probably more responsible for more road deaths than anything else. Um, and obviously, if you drink, drive, kill somebody, the chances are you will go to jail. Make no bones about it. It is death by careless driving. An incident that fairly recent that springs to mind is a friend of my mother's. Um, her son, who was 18, recently passed his driving test, went out with his friends one night, he had too much to drink. Three friends in the back of the car, one friend in the front. They were, I think the three in the back were 17. Driving back along a road that he's driven many times probably, um, he crashed the car and two of his friends in the back died. He then is now facing going to jail for that and he also has to live with the fact he's killed two of his friends. Not a particularly nice thing to happen when you're 18 years of age. We have, um, in our area, we do get criminal damages, uh, damages to vehicles. We get things like burglaries, whereas people maybe take bikes out of gardens, and we get the odd one of pinching furniture from gardens, plant pots, which to kids who's had a drink is going to be funny, but not to the person whose house it is when you to wake up the next morning and notice. We've just recently had a patio heater stolen from a garden, uh, which was a lot of money, a lot of value, um, and that's since been recovered from a garden nearby from where it was stolen. But this was just due to alcohol with the kids and I think it was funny at the time, but not for the person whose house it's been stolen from. I think a lot of the true kids out there think that we actually hate them, which is not the case. Certainly from my experience and my colleagues here, we find most of the kids we talk to to be affable, humorous, perhaps a little cheeky, but by and large really, really nice kids. The only problem is that the really nice kids, after they've had a drink, can suddenly just, you know, they are the devil incarnate, really the turnaround. They can be violent, aggressive, uh, you know, and cause all sorts of criminal damage. But generally, I think the public perception of groups of kids on a Friday night seen outside a particular area is that they're all drunk, that anybody walks along, they're all going to get jumped on, they're going to get beaten up, and they're going to get mugged. Um, particularly old people are very, very fearful of them, and it's, it's something that has been shown in the media, they read it in the news about drunken yobs doing this, that, and the other, whereas the reality is slightly different. Um, when we stop the kids, I sort of like say to them, well, how would you feel if your grandmother was walking along the road and she saw you lot? She would be petrified and they are quite adamant that, you know, they wouldn't want to see that happen. And they aren't out there to cause problems and the vast majority of them are not. But those that are, we do tend to target. 
the situation could be improved by the children getting more knowledge of alcohol and the dangers of alcohol through school, through parents and through other associations. I think education must start in the home. Um, I think the parents must make the children aware of the dangers of alcohol. Um, I think the, the kids tend to view it as you have a drink, you get a little bit merry and, and that's about it. They don't understand the dangers of, like I said, particularly females from the, uh, that they are prey to sexual predators that can be sexually assaulted. Then there's the physiological side of it. Um, I've no doubt the, the medical side will turn around and say that basically alcohol is a poison. Your body views it as such. Kids' internal organs haven't matured so it affects them more. But I think education from everybody, from um, adults as well, from the schools, from the likes of ourselves, to try and point out that you know, alcohol is bad. And the reason it's bad is quite simply because they're not old enough to be able to deal with it. And when they've had too much, they're not in control anymore. And not being in control is not a great place to be.